motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, my friends, my family, my beloveds. What is going on? This is Q with another episode. Yeah, I know I have many names. Queen, Q, whichever one sticks. So um, we are on part number two with Kundalini Awakening. And if you can hear in my voice... I'm so excited. I'm so um, elevated. I'm so ecstatic. It's just, it's just, man, it's just, it's just a great time to be alive. It's just a great time to be in this realm, you know, like I picked the perfect timing to incarnate. And I know that's why it was divine and it is on purpose, you know. I don't know if you feel that way, but I know, like, I chose this timing to be here, to be on earth, to be playing amongst the other humans. <laughs> oh, man, I just I just feel so great. <clears throat> Had a great morning, um, another great yoga meditation session, another great workout. Um, Yeah, the day is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So let's get into the present moment here before we get going. We're going to take a couple of deep breaths and just honor the present moment. Honor the present state that we're in. See, when you're you're in the present moment, nothing else matters. When you're in the present moment, all of your so-called problems... They dissipate. They dissipate. So what does that tell you? What is that a hint at? Stay more in the present moment. (laughs) So anyway, let's take a couple of deep breaths and get there. Here we go. Yes, 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 and more yes, and more life, and more prana, and more chi, and more kundalini, and more sekhmet. Yes, yes. Say yes to life. Man, it's beautiful. So, um, yeah, I'm really high today. I'm really, really high today. (laughs) So anyways, part two, let's get into it, right? So let's do a little bit of review on what we covered on yesterday. I've had some fantastic feedback from individuals that are really getting in and starting to do the work. See, that's the key. That's the key. That's why at the top of my uh, podcast show, um, you'll hear the gentleman say, you know, motivation without action is bullshit, right? You know, you can have all the motivation in the world. You can listen to all the podcasts. You can go to all the, you know, the, the, the health seminars and all the health webinars and all the spiritual classes, you can do all of that. But until you do the work, nothing else matters. You're simply wasting time, you're wasting space, and you're wasting the miraculous energy that lives inside of you. So if you come to anything that I'm doing, whether it be an episode, a webinar, a seminar, a live retreat, you better be prepared to put in the work. You best be prepared to put in the work. Ask any of my clients, from my business clients, my health clients, I don't play when it comes to putting in the work. 
Because until you do that, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. All of your training, all of the time that you've spent cultivating, it doesn't matter until you put the action piece with the training. Then you have understanding. See, the formula is this. Knowledge plus wisdom equals understanding. Knowledge by itself, no good. Wisdom by itself, no good. Put the two together equals understanding. And the knowledge and the wisdom that binds the two is the action. It's the action. So let's do the work. Let's do the work. So hopefully you did your homework last night. And um, you wrote down what those limiting emotions, beliefs, different things like that, that you've been holding on to for years that we are going to talk about today, releasing, releasing so that you, my friend, my family, my beloved can evolve. All right. So let's review a little bit. We're not going to go through it all. If you're on part two, you haven't listened to part one, go back, listen to part one, get yourself up to speed. So we, 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 we reviewed the seven main chakra centers, right? We went from the root chakra all the way up to the crown chakra, all the way out to the Ka chakra. That's just above our physical bodies that the comedic or ancient comedic, which we know as modern day Egypt, this is what they identify as the eighth chakra. All of our ancestors, these are our ancestors, all right? Highly evolved beings. That's who you wanna study. That's who you wanna mimic. <laughs> Not these people that are chasing materialism, that are chasing external forces and things and matter and this and that. No, oh, no, 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 no. Wrong ladder, my friend, wrong ladder. So anyways, um, just to review real quick, like I said, we talked about the seven main chakra uh, energy centers, the endocrine, endocrine glands that are associated with those centers, so forth and so on. But what we really focused in on was the first three chakras from the root, the sacral, and then the solar plexus, okay? Because these three connect us with the earthly realm. These are the three that ground us, that connect us to solid matter, okay? And typically, 99.99999% of the time, people that have issues or stumbling blocks in awakening their kundalini is because they have blockages in these three chakras. So with your homework that I had you do, and that I know you did, because you're a gray A student, I got you, A plus for you. Um, we wrote out a list of different beliefs, different emotions, different things like that, that we've been holding on to, right? So we talked about in that root chakra, we talked about, you know, sexual, type of uh, either depression, addiction, anxiety, pain, conflict. Maybe there's been some sexual trauma in your past from childhood, a molestation, a rape, different things like that. All of that comes out of the root chakra and that blocks you up, okay? Then the next one, the sacral chakra. This is where our guilt, our shame, also pain, unworthiness, this is our intestinal area, right? This is our digestive area where food goes, all right? And we'll talk about diet and exercise on part three tomorrow because that's also very important. I know y'all don't want to talk about that, but we're going to talk about it because it is important. I've been experimenting on myself. I'm going to share some things with you that's going to blow your mind, okay? Okay. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. So in that sacral chakra area, lack, being a victim, all of those different types of emotions sit and are housed within that particular chakra. And then the solar plexus. Solar plexus is our willpower. It's the interconnecting of all of the nadis 
which are the uh, various neurons and connections throughout our body. Remember I talked about if you can envision the tree of life, you know that picture in the Kabbalah, the tree of life. That tree of life comes from us. It comes from the human body, the human anatomy. So at the solar plexus is where this intersection is. Think of a busy, busy, uh, I don't know, maybe in your town, your city, your country or whatever, you have highways that connect, maybe eight, 10 different highways all that connect in one area. This is what the solar plexus is like. So the solar plexus, this is where you have emotions like competition, control, impatience, your ego, and any other self-limiting thoughts are all housed within this particular chakra. So what I had you do yesterday was I had you to write down some of these emotions that you've been hanging on to, some of these experiences that you've been hanging on to that have been holding you back, that have been giving you grief, that have been allowing you to stay in a low vibration. So now there's two ways to get rid of all of that stuff. Okay. There's the psychotherapy way, which takes years and years and years of, of counseling and sitting and talking to a psychotherapist. And I think they prolong the solution so that they can continue to get paid. <laughs> Why? Because they're chasing materialism. They're chasing external things. So that's one way you can do it, right? I'm not a psychotherapist. I can't help you with that, okay? The other solution that I can help you with and that I'm going to give you the formula right now, I'm going to give you the formula right now for free. You don't have to pay me anything. This is a gift to you. Why? Because I want you to evolve. I want more. I want humanity. I want more people like me that are on the cusp of consciousness that are here to explore consciousness and to raise the vibration of humanity because it's just a thought away. It is just a thought away. So here's the solution. This is not a solution that I theorized about. This is not a solution that I pondered about. This is a solution that I have done in my own life. Healed myself from many afflictions, emotionally, mentally, as well as physical, physically, for all of you proper English speaking people. So what you do, this is the solution to get rid of all of those things that you wrote down. Here's what you do, okay? I want you to take your paper. I want you to take it out of the notebook that you wrote it in. All those problems, all those problems, right? Every last single one of them, okay? I want you to hold the paper between both of your hands. Remember, you, you have energy. You have energy running through you that is so magnificent, that is so divine. You cannot see it with the naked eye. You can only see it with your inner eye. You can only feel it with your inner eye. That inner eye is that third eye, the pineal gland. That area is where you can feel it and see it. So even if you can't feel this process that I'm about to take you through, do it anyway and see what happens. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the palms of your hands, both palms of your hands, and I want you to just look at them. I want you to look at the palms of your hands. So you have your left hand up, your right hand up, and you're simply have them together and you're looking 
at them. So where you focus your attention is where energy goes. I want you to think about love, unconditional love, and I want you to think about gratitude. What are you grateful for right now? Maybe the fact that you woke up, the fact that you can breathe, the fact that you can walk, the fact that you can see, the fact that you can hear. I want you to think about all of that. Your children, your relationships, your friends, your pets. All of that love. Continue to look at your hands. Continue to focus your eyes on your hands. And you're sending this love and this gratitude into the palms of your hands. Now, I want you to rub your hands together. Take that paper, place it like a sandwich between both of your hands. So you have one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top, you got the paper in the middle. And I want you to go into a state of forgiveness. I don't care what the affliction was. I don't care what happened. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. I want you to forgive. You're forgiving yourself, most importantly. You are forgiving whomever your abuser was. You're forgiving others that you think have some sort of responsibility into whatever happened to you. You're forgiving yourself. You are forgiving others. You are forgiving your abuser. You are forgiving the experience you're forgiving yourself for holding on to it for so long. You're forgiving your body, your organs, your heart. You're forgiving your time. You're forgiving everything around what you wrote on this paper. And you're sending love and you're sending compassion and you're sending this grateful energy that you just harnessed into all of these situations. Now you're taking that paper and you're simply balling it up. Balling it up into a nice ball. We're going to set this ball to the side for right now. Okay? I want you to look at the palms of your hands again. All that love, all that energy that's within you right now. All the gratitude, everything. Rubbing your palms together again. Rubbing your palms together again. Taking your hands and putting them on the top of your head at your crown chakra. Coming down the sides of your ears, the sides of your neck, onto your shoulders. Bringing them down the sides of your waist, your thighs, your knees, all the way down your legs, your ankles, your feet. Coming back up. Putting your hands in front of you in prayer mode. Taking a deep breath. Placing, crisscrossing your arms in front of you. Kind of like the uh, Wakanda pose. Wakanda. Taking another deep breath. And I want you to say out loud, Ashe. Ashe, Asheo. Ashe, 
Ashe, Asheo. What does that mean? That means so it is, it will be. So it is, it will be. So it is, it will be. That's an ancient Kemetic dialect. Ashe. So what you've just done, my friend, is you've taken, I don't know, multiple years of psychotherapy sessions and you've just deduced that down to 20 minutes of work. So your freedom and your liberation, your e emotional freedom, your, your mental liberation is simply a thought away. It doesn't have to take years. It's a thought. If you make a thought, you draw the line in the sand and that is what it is. That's why we sealed all of this with Ashe. Now what I want you to do later on is that ball of paper that you have. I want you to even seal the deal even further. Okay. I want you to do it right now, but do it later. So if you have a fireplace in your house, um, I typically do this at bonfires. Like we had bonfire parties and stuff like that. And we release, you know, old traumas, negative emotions, different experiences that are low vibration. We throw it all into the fire. So what you're going to do is you're going to set that paper that you balled it up. You're going to set that paper on fire. That's going to be your ceremony. That's your liberation ceremony. You just freed yourself. You just freed the space within your vessel to awaken this divine energy that's been sitting there waiting for you to make a decision and get rid of this shit so that it can rise. You just did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. I want to be the first one to tell you congratulations. Now, this is just like going to the gym, right? I know you all wish we could go to the gym one time, lift weights, and then have beach bodies, right? That's not how it works. To build a muscle, you got to build it up, tear it down, build it up, tear it down, build it up, tear it down. That's just how it goes. Okay. So now this whole process that I just took you to was really a meditation. But we did some physical things in the process because I really wanted to embed in you the entire process. So now because you've been carrying these experiences and these negative emotions and these low vibrations for so many years, it's going to take some practice to totally get rid of them, right? So you're going to have to do a daily practice to keep those chakras clear so that your Kundalini can rise. So each day you have to go into this meditative practice that I just shared with you and you have to do it each and every single day because why your ego has been trained for however long you've been holding on to the crap. It's been trained to continue to feed. That's how the ego stays alive. It continues to feed off of low vibration. It continues to send you, you know, reasons why you should hate this person, reasons why you should dislike this family member, reasons why this, that, or the other, right? You can always come up with reasons because that's your ego trying to stay alive. So as you meditate every single day and you continue to keep those three chakras clear, you're training your ego to sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. That's what you're training your ego to do. You have to treat your ego almost like a pet sometimes. Go sit in the corner and shut up. 
When I need you, I'll call on you. But most people, they allow their ego to run them. And they're sitting in the corner and shutting up. And the ego is in the driver's seat. So now we're flipping the script. Why? Because we want to be evolved beings. 5D meta-humans. I'm not trying to be a regular 3D human. That's so boring. So that daily meditative practice, the process that I just shared with you, you're going to want to incorporate that every single day to keep those chakras cleared out. To keep those chakras cleared out. And continue how I, how I had you go into a space of love and gratitude and forgiveness. Those are high vibration frequencies. Those are the frequencies that attract the things to you that you truly want. Again, it is a practice. So you got to keep practicing. You know, science says you have to do something for 21 consecutive days in order to make it a habit. And depending on your diet, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. Yep, I'm going to step on some toes. We're going to talk about some diet. Depending on your diet, it could be more than 21 days. So what I say, don't try to make it an event. Make it a lifestyle change. Meditation should be a part of your lifestyle. Like, yeah, if you're, if you're trying to be a metahuman, like you're exploring consciousness, you're looking to evolve, there's no way around it. You have to meditate. Meditation is just simply mastering energy, channeling energy. Channeling energy. <laughs> That's it. That's all it is. Just a way to channel energy. And energy is all around us. All in, throughout, everywhere. It's everywhere. Can't get away from it. So that is the work for today. Again, remember to seal the deal. I want you, if you got a fireplace, throw this in the fireplace. Throw it in the skillet on top of the stove. However you want to burn it, just don't burn yourself. All right, be smart. I, I, yeah, yeah, I know you're on the level. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just be smart, right? Burn it up. Burn it up. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's done. Ashe, 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 oh. It's done. So now, as we continue the daily practice of meditation, keeping these chakras cleared, and we continue this meditative practice, I'm going to show you another meditation tomorrow with the diet and exercise. I'm going to show you another meditation because this meditation really focuses on clearing out the gunk, the gunk, the muck, the all of that. I'm going to share another meditation with you that's going to, to train you to awaken the energy and, and have the energy to start moving. Okay? So we'll talk about that on tomorrow along with diet and exercise. Okay? So this was part two of Kundalini Awakening. I hope that, uh, I, I know, I know, I can feel it. I know you enjoyed today. I know you did. I feel it. I feel your energy. So um, we'll talk on tomorrow. Also, um, someone had asked me about uh, my fasting regimen and working out. Take a look at my YouTube channel. I'm doing a better job at uploading more content to my YouTube channel. So take a look at that. Go to YouTube, uh, type in Queen Maat, and it should pull up Queen space Maat. M-A-A-T, and my channel should pull up. If you don't find it that way, go to thequeendome.com, thequeendome.com, and click on the uh, little YouTube icon, and it'll take you to the channel so that you can subscribe and kind of see all of the stuff that I put over there in addition to these podcast episodes. All right? 
So that is it for today, my friend, my family, my beloved. I uh, know that you enjoyed it. Uh, I want to, again, congratulate you on relieving yourself and liberating yourself and moving yourself to another level of consciousness, getting into that 5D meta-human realm. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination, but you're on the right path. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.